you know, sport isn't a comfortable place to be and it and it never will be. If you want to be comfortable, you know, go and have a, you know, sit in a relax in your garden or, you know, or go leisure cycling. Like sport and competitive sport is not a comfortable place. So if if you and, and a lot of people thrive on that as as we have done and, and mm. do. And and I think it it's a that that's the trickiest thing I think for any kind of non sporty competitive sport people to understand is is that is that it is a little bit uncomfortable at points uh, but the rewards that come from being a little bit uncomfortable sometimes are very very significant Sarah what's the most pressurized environment you've ever felt like when when did it feel like it was all on your shoulders have you ever felt like or oh, like Barney just alluded to the pain the pain of the of the process when did it feel like it was at its you know I don't want to say worst because it feels like that's not what you're implying but at its peak um I think it probably comes in a team environment so some of the most nerve-wracking points have been sat sitting with uh, Team Pursuit teammates either side of you or next to you. Um, the World Cup in Manchester when I was riding with Wendy Huvenagel and Joanna Roussel, we broke the sea level world record that day and then a few months later we were racing against the same Kiwi team in Cali and Colombia um, to win the World Cup overall that year and that was the year before the Olympics in, in 2012. And knowing that you needed to finish, all of you had to finish, there was no way you could finish with three because you only started with three in those days and the team pursuit format was different. Uh, you couldn't be the weak link. You had to deliver your turns. You had to follow the pattern that was set that you'd trained to. And um, if you were having a bad day, you had to get over that very quickly uh, and there was no concessions. Um, and so, yeah, making a mistake wasn't an option. And uh, you always consider, you know, what will I do if I do make a mistake? You've got to try and put those things out of your mind. So I think the psychological training paid off dividends in those moments because you, you know, you were really, really motivated to make sure that you didn't let anyone down. What's the balance with sport between physical ability and mental strength and toughness? Which which do you sort of say is 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 the one that the one that you really, really need? Well, if you don't have the physical capabilities, you don't get the chance to test that mental toughness. Um, so I think you need them both, but in different orders. But you, you have to develop that mental toughness from the beginning. And you will see it with children, you know, developing that understanding that it won't always go well. And that's one of the reasons why we all want our children to take part in sport. We don't really mind where they reach, provided those lessons are, are, are coming to them and, and give them that chance to kind of shape themselves. <laughs> 